Hey everyone, today I'm going to review the Dell Inspiron 14 model number 5410. So this is a review unit Dell has sent over for me to show you guys. My review will be from the perspective of a visual content creator, someone who does graphic design, digital art, edits photos and videos. And this review is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, you can actually check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. I'll put the link in the video description below. Now, when you search online for Dell Inspiron 5410, you may see another model called the Dell Latitude 5410. Those two laptops, I mean this and the other laptop, are different. So Dell Inspiron 14 is the one where you can fold the display 360 to the other side and this is a touch screen which supports the Dell Active Pen. So don't buy the wrong laptop. Just to give you the bottom line up front, this 2-in-1 convertible laptop is not suitable for graphic design work because the display supports up to 64-65% sRGB from what I've measured with my Spider 5 Pro color calibrator. And the initial activation force of this Dell Active Pen is higher than what I would prefer. So when it comes to drawing with very low or minimal pressure, it's difficult to get thin lines and it's difficult to get the lines to taper nicely. But when it comes to doing office work, um, this laptop, it performs uh, really well. I mean, for people who are thinking of buying something like this, where you get a touchscreen and the touchscreen supports a pen like this, is probably because you want to write on the display and the handwriting and note-taking performance is quite good. This review unit that I have here runs the Intel 11th Gen i7 1165G7, which basically is a quad core 2.8 gigahertz processor. It has 16 gigs of RAM and 500 gigs of SSD storage. And the graphics card is the NVIDIA GeForce MX350 with two gigs of memory. The overall build quality for this laptop is good. The plastic body has a nice matte texture on it and this is pretty compact for a 14 inch laptop. There is some flex if you want to flex it but overall it's still quite solid. The display is 14 inches and it supports 1080p resolution. The laptop measures 1.6 centimeters at the thinnest and 1.8 centimeters at the thickest. That's the power port, full size HDMI version 1.4, USB Type A 3.2 Gen 1, USB Type C 3.2 Gen 2 with Display Port functionality. So this can drive an external 4K display. At the other side, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone and microphone port. USB Type A 3.2 Gen 1 and this is the micro SD card reader. Holes for the exhaust are here and there are two pieces of hard plastic for the display. The ventilation grills are for air intake. There's a single fan inside. These two holes are for the downward facing speakers. The audio quality is hollow. That's the other downside of this laptop. The audio quality for rubber feet. If you want to get inside, you can remove the seven screws here. The RAM is user replaceable. I'm not sure about the NVMe SSD though. I actually like the design and the build quality for this laptop. I think it's pretty good. At the top of the display is this 720p webcam with a cover for privacy. The bezels are quite Thin. Now this is a very glossy display so you can see the reflections very clearly and even when there are no light sources you can still see the reflections so to get the best image quality uh, you have to view the display from the front. I've measured a maximum brightness of 210 nits which is alright for indoor use so this display is definitely not suitable for use outdoors because of how glossy the display is and the maximum brightness and speaking of maximum brightness when you actually power on or use the laptop for the first time 
Dell BIOS actually would set the maximum brightness at 50% if you are running on battery power. So I'm going to restart the laptop and press F2 to get into the Dell BIOS. So within Dell BIOS under display brightness on battery power, you should set this to 100% because you cannot change this using the shortcut buttons on the keyboard. Another settings you should change is eco power. This is turned on by default. Now this will adjust the brightness depending on the content that you see on the display. Eco power is extremely irritating. So for example, when you are scrolling a web page, let's say eco power is turned on right now, this display will be dimmer. As I scroll down, I see more text and this is mostly white, so the display will become brighter. But when I scroll back up again to see some pictures, the screen will become dimmer. When I switch tabs, the brightness will change as well. So the brightness can change multiple times when you scroll down a web page or when you switch tabs or switch apps. Eco power is meant to conserve battery life, but it's extremely irritating. So you have to turn that off. I'm using the 41 WHR battery here and I get about four and a half hours of battery life, which is all right. If you get the larger battery, you can probably get about five and a half hours of battery life. The keyboard is excellent. The size is proper keyboard size. The function buttons double as shortcuts for volume control, media playback, and the brightness. The fingerprint sensor is here on the top right. The keys have good travel. They are springy. They have firm feedback. The overall typing experience is excellent. And you can see the keys are backlit. The trackpad is big. It's sensitive with left and right click areas. You can also use finger gestures. The click is slightly stiffer than what I prefer, but overall it works. However, there is an issue. Occasionally, the trackpad would register a single tap as a tap and hold. So for example, when you are surfing the web and you want to switch tabs using a single tap like this, um, this works as per normal, but sometimes this would happen. I'm going to click here, but in reality, there is not going to be any click. It's going to register a click and hold and it's going to drag your window around, which is not something you want. And when you are typing, you can tap on the address bar here and move, but it will just drag all the text along, which is again what you don't want. So if you are able to test the trackpad in person, I highly recommend you do so before you buy this laptop. Overall performance of this laptop is smooth and fast. I highly recommend you upgrade this to 16 gigs of RAM if you have the budget. The read speed for the internal NVMe SSD is up to 2.4 gigs per second and the write speed is up to 1.4 gigs per second. So when you start up the laptop, it's really fast. If you save or open huge files, it's very quick. You can switch between tabs very quickly. And even when I'm using Photoshop or any graphic design software, um, everything is really quick and very smooth. Most of the time, the fans don't even wrap up. So that's uh, pretty good. I can also connect this to an external monitor. And here you can see the difference in terms of brightness. So the maximum brightness is 200 nits. This is running at 350 nits. So if you want to actually do some graphic design work, uh, you won't be able to color check on this display, which only supports up to 64, 65% as RGB. You have to connect an external monitor to do color checking. If you do color checking this way, you always have to open your file on the external display. It's quite troublesome. This laptop is powerful enough to edit 1080p videos, but you do have to connect the power source because this is obviously going to drain the battery life much faster. And also the fans will actually wrap up. It's quite noisy. So if you are relying on the speakers to edit the audio, um, I don't recommend that. You definitely need to use Bluetooth headphones or connect 
the headphones to the 3.5 millimeter audio jack here to get the best audio quality so while the video is exporting in the background you can actually go do other work you can still edit your photos and there is no lag so the intel processor the quad core intel processor in this laptop is quite powerful definitely more than adequate for multitasking to get the best drawing and handwriting experience you should use an active stylus so this is the dell active stylus pn 350m you can also use the microsoft surface pen however the performance of the dell active pen is much better this is actually more accurate compared to the surface pen so this is powered by one single battery this is the 4a battery and battery life should last six months to a year there are two shortcut buttons here but customization is very limited with windows 10 as well as the various drawing software that i have tested the pen tip has some movement to it this pen supports slightly over 1000 levels of pressure sensitivity it does not have tilt sensitivity there are two ways you can use this two-in-one convertible laptop for drawing you can choose to flip the screen behind in which case you will lose access to the keyboard which is behind so if i use this as a tablet i would pair it with a bluetooth keyboard but most of the time i will actually just use this as a laptop for drawing but i will find some stand to put behind so that this can provide support for the display because when i draw i will press down so this will i mean the stand will actually provide support as i press down if you don't have a stand it will mean you have to use your other hand to hold the tablet and you can see this is going to move so the experience is not good it's best to find a stand to put behind so that this is like way more stable this way i will have access to the keyboard as well and with this tablet stand i can also use this to prop up my laptop depending on the app that you use you may or may not have perfect palm rejection so the dell active pen actually provides basic palm rejection when the pen tip is close to the display and you see the cursor you won't be able to introduce any stray strokes however if the pen is away and you have your finger or your palm on the display it may actually introduce stray strokes so at least with this particular app midibank paint pro it doesn't provide perfect palm rejection this is adobe photoshop and this supports perfect palm rejection so i can use my finger to draw on the display and nothing will happen but it still supports finger gestures for zooming in panning around and rotating the canvas i have tested Critar, minibank paint pro adobe photoshop adobe illustrator affinity photo affinity designer clip studio paint sketchable concepts out of all these apps only minibank paint pro does not have perfect palm rejection for all the other apps they only allow pen input for drawing and fingers for finger gestures this display is laminated but there is thickness for the this display is laminated but the glass has some thickness so from what you are watching it seems like there is a gap between the line and the pen tip there is also the input lag as the line tries to catch up with the pen tip the diagonal lines have slight wobble but it's not too bad just for comparison purposes this is the microsoft surface pen and you can see the wobble is more noticeable this is basically unusable for drawing pressure sensitivity is affected by initial activation force and in this case the initial activation force of the dell active pen is higher than what i would prefer so when it comes to drawing thin lines it's quite challenging 
This brush that I'm using is 100 pixels wide. Now, if you're using a pen tablet like those from Wacom, you will be able to get like thin lines really easily. And here the variance or the variation from the thin and thick, it's not that wide. With a proper pen tablet, you can see the lines are going to be really thin. Another problem with high initial activation force is the strokes will not taper properly. The strokes will taper quite abruptly like what you see here. You may choose a brush with a shape that looks like this, but when you are actually drawing with this dollars, it feels like you are drawing with a blunt marker. If you have used a pen tablet before, you will know that pen tablets are way more sensitive. So you can still use this laptop for some casual drawing, but I will not recommend this for professional work. This is a sketch that I drew with this dollars. Occasionally, I would wish um, the pen to be more sensitive because sometimes I like to choose like a really thick brush and use that brush as much as possible. I can use the thick brush to draw thin lines just by using very minimal pressure. But with this active stylus, I am not able to do that. The only glitch I experience with the various drawing apps I've tested is with Concepts. So Concepts is actually an app designed for Windows 10 tablets and it supports finger gestures really well. There is perfect palm rejection as well. Unfortunately for this app, which also happens to be one of my favorite drawing apps is when I draw with Concepts, there is this occasional problem where the line doesn't show up so i can't see what i'm actually drawing this is clip studio no problems with clip studio except for the initial activation force which makes drawing thin lines kind of tricky so there is also a problem with the line tapers here as well but the overall drawing performance is actually um, quite uh, usable. If you are into taking notes, the note taking performance is good. You just have to find an app that gives you perfect palm rejection or strict palm rejection. 1080p gaming is possible too. I've tried playing GTA 5 with high textures and was able to get 60 FPS so this uh, graphics card, the NVIDIA GeForce MX350 is able to keep up however uh, you can expect the fans to be like really loud. Right to conclude, this 2-in-1 convertible laptop is powerful enough for most use cases even for 1080p video editing. The only downsides are the trackpad with the occasional issue of registering the tap and hold rather than a single tap and the downward firing speakers. But other than that, I'm actually quite surprised by the performance which is actually quite good. For graphic design, digital art, Visual content creation, I will not recommend this because the color accuracy of the display is not that great. And the uh, drawing performance of the Dell Active Pen, uh, it's not as good compared to other pen tablets or pen displays, mostly because the initial activation force is higher than what I would like. This laptop would excel as an office computer for office type work. Now, if you do processor intensive work, Surprisingly, this laptop is able to keep up due to the specs. So overall, um, it's a good laptop with just some downsides, the display, the speakers and the trackpad.